Bonjour, and let's look at the easiest and most difficult aircraft in DCS to refuel. Which is the most difficult for you to refuel? Are you one of those people that says they're all easy? Either way, do let us know in the comments, especially if you feel like sharing some detail as to why. Why was this aircraft the most easy? Or why was that one the most difficult? And in addition, at the end, some bonus content for those people who own the F-18 Hornet and still find it a little bit difficult to refuel. I know there are some people who haven't had very much time. Perhaps you picked the aircraft up in a sale recently, or maybe you just haven't got around so much flying in the air-to-air -air refuel arena. Either way, do stick around. There's a huge tip coming up for you. Let's strap in, buckle up. Here we go with the easiest aircraft in DCS to refuel. Hello DCS pilots and an especially warm welcome to the returning subscribers of the channel. It's lovely to have you here with me again as we are cruising over the desert of the Persian Gulf here in Saudi Arabia. Chasing the tanker from the 6, we're about to plug and play and get funky in the air-to-air -air refueling. We start here in the French Mirage 2000 and this, despite being the first module that I ever owned for DCS, I still think is the easiest one to refuel. There is no bias there. I will try and demonstrate this how and why. I'll put my controls on screen. So this isn't a tutorial on how to do everything properly by the book. It's just showing how easily that we can do this. So the tanker's here. Let's hit him up. Uh, F6, intend to refuel. And one of the advantages of having a Delta Wing is it's not only fast, but it's very, very easy to quickly lose speed. like I've just demonstrated there. Air brakes in, air brakes out. Ah, uh, there we are in slot. Let's tell him that we're basically ready for free contact. Let me just straighten my camera. It doesn't seem quite right. There we go. See how effective those air brakes are with that velocity vector on screen. There is some debate about whether they are too effective. Um, I've never flown a Mirage 2000, so I couldn't tell you, but it does seem a little bit, uh, a little bit violent, that speed reduction. So here we are, ready pre-contact, waiting for the chute to come out. We see there is the uh, plug for the Mirage that's, of course, always extended. However... It still does have an on-off switch. It's this little one above the throttle here. Move it into the middle position to turn it on and into the top position to enable a little light that folds out at the side of the aircraft in case you're doing this at night. Or you just like to have the light out anyway, like me. And there we are plugged in. Now, this is very, very easy, even without VR. See, if we go too fast, we just put the air brakes out. We drop back, we just put the burners on. It's a very, very easy uh, aircraft to refuel. Uh, let me try actually with the uh, autopilot. Let's just try and stabilize a sec. Let's see if we can go with the autopilot. There we go. Autopilot on. Mm, it's not worth the uh, effort actually. It's e easier without, certainly. And so there, that is the easiest aircraft in uh, DCS to refuel, bar none. Here we are in the A10C. Now this happens to be the Mark II variant, but it really doesn't matter either one. And I do expect there to be some debate over this answer. However, this answer comes with an asterisk. And that asterisk is, it depends if you are wearing VR or not. Blah, blah, blah. That was a bit of a tongue twister. Depends if you're using VR or not. Let's say it like that. And I have flown VR for years in DCS. And because of that, depth perception is much easier in VR. And because of that, I found uh, some of the other aircraft that other people maybe struggled with much easier to refuel. And this aircraft, even though it is easier for people in track IR, such as myself now... In VR, this I found the more difficult. Now, that isn't to say this aircraft's more difficult to refuel in VR. What I'm saying is the other aircraft are much easier to refuel in VR. And this one I've found actually makes no difference. Either way, let's have a look at the uh, refueling aircraft. There we are coming up behind it. A, a big portion of refueling in this one is actually catching up with the tanker in the first place. 
Although I didn't include that as a factor as to why this is the most difficult aircraft to refuel in VR. But it's... Um, it certainly doesn't help. Anyway, I've put this uh, shell nice and slow, 200 and some knots, air brakes out. Let's just stabilize here one moment. I'll just activate the autopilot as I contact the tanker. Okay. Um, autopilot's going to disconnect in a moment anyway. I mean, you know, if this was a proper tutorial, you know, it'd all be on about master arm and so on. So let's just, uh, let's disable that. And let's open the refueling lines. I believe it's one of these here. If I zoom in. Yeah, we've got the tank gate. Let's open the cross feed. Pull this lever down. I think it's really just pulling that lever down. But either way, I think opening the tank gate is helpful. So let's pick up. Get into position. And in track IR or VR. VR, you've got the advantage of depth perception. Yeah, so it makes flying formation and other work especially where there involves any sort of judgment of distance or judging a gap, very much easier in VR, all right? However, in this refueling mode here, you don't actually get an advantage over judging the angle of the refueling pipe. So I'm not saying it's easier or more difficult in track AR. That's precisely what I am saying. It's about the same difficulty in VR as track IR in the A10, this refueling procedure here. Because what we need to do is keep that pipe in the green, as you see up there. So we add power, go a bit higher. But the angle, judging, uh, trying to judge the angle at which this pipe is being fed out of the back of that aircraft. In this view, i.e. cockpit, I find no easier in VR as track IR. And there's a disconnect. And the only way to resolve this issue once there's been a disconnect, it actually won't plug in again until you cycle. Let's get rid of that annoying. Uh, where are we? There we go. So you can't plug in again once you've been disconnected or thrown out until you cycle the refueling. So we've got to turn that lever off. You get rid of the message, then turn it on again. And instead of having the... Uh, disconnect message there you get that ready message instead now you are ready to reattach so if you are in the a10 and you do get chucked out once the reason that you can't plug in again is because you need to cycle that lever i've uh, been online several times where people have had this issue they've been really grateful for that tip it is of course one of those things that if you don't know you don't know and once you know it's sorted so here we are again and yeah, in my opinion, if you are a VR user, this is the most difficult aircraft to refuel in VR. If you are not a VR user or for everybody else, let's move on to the most difficult aircraft in DCS to refuel. There will be many people, I don't doubt, who expected to see this aircraft as the most difficult to refuel. We are, of course, in the F-14, happen to be in the A version for this one. But I don't think it is. Um, this is going to be a little bit of bonus content, therefore, showing the uh, refueling of this. I do think there is a little bit of a, a tip or a trick or a knack to it. So I'm going to show my controls on screen. We've got the two throttles that I'm splitting around there, the flight controls there, the rudder down there, and that little blob you see right about there above the stick is, of course, the trim position. So... The reason I think most people find this one difficult is uh, Heat Blur, I think, have done extremely well in uh, adding many of the more advanced aerodynamic functions that are in an aircraft that perhaps some of the other modules just didn't bother with. And one of those I find is when you extend the refueling probe, if we take a look in the cockpit here as we do so, you see, it sticks this thing out into the right. And look at that. The aircraft starts turning to the right. And that's because 
clearly sticking a thing out into the airflow like this basically acts as like a mini air brake and on one side of the aircraft not the other to boot and because of that the aircraft does want to lurch ever so slightly to the right so with that brief explanation out the way let's catch up to the tanker and i will bring you back see we are having chased the uh, tanker across the desert with my uh, refueling probe extended there and as always if i'm approaching a tanker a little quick from behind i pull up round the side so high low i believe they call it it's a very very useful maneuver not just in uh, dogfighting but also when you're pursuing tankers and here we are sort of stabilized ish behind so the first key as with any air to air refueling is to stabilize behind the aircraft having contacted now i find the f-14 uh, it has a autopilot that i toggle on and off very useful while you're trying to do certain other things in this case We've got the refueling probe already extended. Let's disconnect the autopilot now and let's say that we are ready. I already know if we're the only one here, we're going to get the left side of the uh, aircraft. And there it extends. Let's move in. Now, as we discussed previously, this refueling probe on the right half of the aircraft here adds drag onto the right hand side. So I'm going to try and mitigate that if you look at my throttles here by splitting them slightly and adding more power onto the right hand side in order to try and cancel out that effect. I find this very helpful and I'm just going to move them both up. If you don't have split throttles you can maybe try uh, using the rudder as well and contact. Now it's just a case of staying here so I'm going to add same as before keep those throttles split i'm going to try and keep the refueling pod that i see in front of me to the center or just to the right of center of my heads up display ensuring that i don't get too close or too far away from the aircraft again there's no magic setting no perfect setting with the throttle it's a constant movement let's just assume that you did find a perfect power setting as soon as you take 10, 20, 30 more pounds of fuel, your aircraft weighs more. Thereby, you've got to add a tiny little bit more lift to counteract the extra weight. And that perfect setting is thrown out. So there is no perfect power setting. Don't bother trying to find it. Just keep moving the throttles back and forward a bit like you see me doing. And that will serve you well. And... Oh, we must have... Uh, Gotten to the extreme of an angle there and lost connection. Certainly didn't visually disconnect. Getting a little bit close there. And so let's now move over to what I believe is the most difficult aircraft to refuel in DCS. Some people love it, some people hate it. We are, of course, talking about the Harrier. In my opinion, this is a brilliant module. This module just came out when I first started my DCS career, if that's how you want to call it. What, five, six years ago now or thereabouts? And yeah, this I find the most difficult to refuel. So I'm going to turn my externals on, put it into night mode and... What makes this difficult to refuel is the position of the probe relative to the pilot and that if you try and look at the probe this way and try and fly it may it makes it really really difficult to fly in a straight line one of the interesting things uh we can quickly see here in the uh harrier they added this feature several months ago now but you can see these little chevrons on the heads up display sometimes they seem like they're random but they're actually over flare hotspots or uh, infrared hotspots so they're gonna pick up aircraft very easily as well as targets on the ground let's compress time a tad while we do uh, catch up with the tanker here again don't want to just redline the engine because it as some of you know it does die in the eight uh, in the harry if you redline it so here we are more or less getting into position now let's contact the tanker and request fuel just going to activate the autopilot just briefly while I get the uh, fuel probe extended. If we look here, there goes that fuel probe. What a nice little sweet animation. 
Let's slow down, disconnect the autopilot. One thing with the uh, Harrier is the engine takes a very long time, that Pegasus, to wind up. So if you lose speed and then have to open the power again, it takes a long time. So I do recommend, if possible, pull back, pull back the power a little bit and or use the air brakes. If you have to go all the way to idle and then you run out of speed, you're looking at possibly another 30, 45 seconds to get back into position. So just bear that in mind. With that done, let's press ready pre-contact. And that's what we've got to, uh, we've got to get that thing into that thing, that basket coming out the back. So the people who don't have the uh, Harrier or haven't tried this before will probably say, well, just look left and line it up. It's just the same as plugging it in at the front, except it's to the left. So just look left. It can't be any different than flying in formation. And yeah, if I hadn't done this, I would say that sounds like the logical thing to do. I agree with you. But for those people who have perhaps tried to drive a car and looked out the side window while they're trying to do it, even if there's somebody sat there telling you which way to go, it's actually really difficult to do. And that's why in uh, real life, in the two crew, like the F-14, the pilot is looking out in front and his uh, Rio in the back is telling him left, right, up, down. That's why in helicopter pilots, you know, the pilot is looking out the front in the hover and there's somebody else saying left a bit, right a bit. Because if the pilot looks down, he tries, he sort of, you know, that head thing happens and loses our spatial orientation. Looks exactly the same in DCS with the air-to-air -air refueling in the Harrier. Now, it's somewhat mitigated with the VR headset and it does help. To, it definitely makes this much easier in VR. However, that's only because you are better able to judge the distance between how far is this pole and how far is this basket. But you still have the same issue of looking left or looking in front. So the way I do this, and again, take three or four stabs is typical for me. So if this happens quicker, it's chance. And if it ha takes longer, it's just bad chance. But basically try and get that basket in the right place and push forward. And there you see we miss. So let's wind back. Again, don't idle all the way. It'll take forever to get the speed on again. And let's stabilize before pushing in again. And let's try here. Yes, that's better. So once we have contact, don't get too close. You certainly don't want this basket falling out again with the difficulty. I find it's best to line up with the left side of this engine cowling here, the leftmost engine cowling. So line up with the left. And I'm looking for the two green lights on the refuel probe there, telling me that I'm at the right distance. So I'm going to try and stay here again with the engine on about that five degree ladder following the left side and keeping the two green lights. So it's quite difficult here. I could probably do with trimming out the aircraft a little better. Let's uh, try and do that now. So I'm going to trim up slightly. There we go. Much more stable now with that new trim setting. Can, of course, turn the autopilot on on this, but it's nowhere near as helpful as it is in the F-18. I've currently got it engaged still got to make corrections it'll just help with the stability so i'm actually doing a really good job helping with the stability i'm having to make much fewer movements so there we go the easiest and most difficult aircraft in dcs to refuel so before we wrap this one up let's have a look as promised at a huge tip for refueling the f-18 hornet not by the book just the easiest way to do it pussycat is ringing her bell in an agreement let's jump into the cockpit I've got my fuel page open on the right screen and I'm going to contact the tanker, ask for some fuel. So one of the uh, keys to getting the uh, correct message, often you see people saying it says return pre-contact. That can actually happen because you are too close to the tanker as well as too far away. If the TACAN was working, which unfortunately isn't in the current build of DCS, you would find that the optimum range to get a pre-contact, when you see the range saying 0.1 and it just ticks from 0.1, the moment you see it tick over to 0.0, that's the time to ask for fuel, which is more or less where we are now. So let's uh, request now. You also need to be level with the, with the uh, tanker as we are here. So with these things happening, let's go ahead and extend the refueling probe. See it unfolding there from the front of the aircraft. 
And the big tip here, and I know some people won't like this because it's not official, but it is the easiest way to do it, and that is to activate the autopilot. So with us more or less stable here, let's come over to the uh, AP button and press this one, the attitude hold. And with that pressed, don't think you can move the stick all the way around the controls because it will throw you out of the autopilot and disconnect. But you can move your flight control stick somewhere around that sort of distance if you look in the lower left. And you'll notice it's the movements are much slower and more precise. This makes the refueling job very much easier. So the first thing with your throttles, you must stabilize with the speed of the tanker. If you are fast and then too slow and too fast, this won't work. So the easiest way to do this is just don't think about plugging in straight away. Just think about stabilizing behind the aircraft like this. And once you've got a picture looking something like what you see here, where it's, yeah, it's relatively stable and you're not having huge difficulties, start edging closer. And as you edge closer, just keep that basket just to the right half of your heads up display in the uh, just above the horizon like this. Keep moving closer and the basket will connect. At that point, pull back slightly on the throttle, and now there is no magic setting, just keep moving them slowly back, slowly forward, so you're staying in position. Even if you were to find the exact position to be with the throttles, if you look, there's the fuels transfer, and we've got, I don't know, let's call it 50 or more pounds per second. So a second later, with that extra 50 pound that your aircraft's carrying, and the added weight and drag because of it, your perfect throttle setting no longer is. So trust me when I say this, there is no perfect throttle setting. Just keep moving them slowly backwards and forwards the entire time. Just very slight, small movements. Don't be doing anything like this. You'll quickly get unstable if you do so. Just make nice, small corrections. So here we are nearing the end of the video. I do hope you found it interesting and informative, but most of all, enjoyable. I'm sure you leave a like if you did and comment perhaps, especially if you have some interesting ideas on techniques to make the refueling process easier for you. Perhaps you have a different idea on which are the easiest and most difficult. Do let us all know in the comments section. I look forward to reading them. And until next time, wherever in the world you may be, good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night. Oh, worst time for the track IR to suddenly start working.